Welcome to 22 and 23. Today's topic is oral sex. So why are we talking about oral sex? Why not? It's often portrayed um, as foreplay, uh, but in fact, it's really an act of sex or participating in pleasure with two people. So what oral sex basically is, is mouth to private part, whether that's penis, vagina, clitoris, anus, all of those would count as oral sex. And the reason that it's worth talking about specifically is because it carries its own risks and benefits. So um, the risks are that it still is possible to get and spread STIs with oral sex. So it's still important to know your status, but benefit, no pregnancy risk. So um, that's basically the oral sex rundown. On to your questions. Question number one. I want to know about HPV. My partner and I have oral sex. What tests do we need to do for HPV? I know it might cause cancer. So HPV stands for human papillomavirus and it's responsible for, it has a number of strains, but some of the bad strains are responsible for some types of cancer, including cervical, um, mouth and throat, um, anal and penile. And in addition to cancers, it can also cause genital warts. So within the past 20 years or so, we've started offering the HPV vaccine, which can provide some protection against some of the more high risk strains of HPV that can lead to cancers or genital warts. And so that's one way to protect yourself. When it comes to HPV of the head and neck or the mouth, um, we don't have a good test for it. And that is part of the risk of HPV. In fact, the only way that we routinely check for HPV is through pap smears or cervical checks. Um, and that starts when you're 21, but we don't have a good test for mouth HPV, which is a bummer because um, it can lead to forms of head and neck cancer. So um, the best thing to do is to get the vaccine and get, if you have female anatomy, get cervical checks regularly. Um, but otherwise, unfortunately, there's no test for the, the mouth HPV. Question number two. I like to keep my pubic hair long, like three inches. I'm worried my partner may not perform oral sex because of the long pubic hair. How do I convince them that having long pubic hair is okay? You shouldn't need to convince your partner that having long pubic hair is okay. They are lucky enough to be down there. So there is no reason that anyone has to shave or trim their pubic hair. It's a personal choice, but um, it is there and it's your choice. And if your partner can't deal with it, then kick them out of there. Question number three. If you have oral HSV-1, can you also get genital HSV-1? So I think what the question is asking is can you get spread from the mouth, which HSV-1, herpes simplex type 1, is the type that causes cold sores. HSV-2 is typically the one that causes genital herpes, but um, you can get both. We'll talk about that later. But um, no, it doesn't spread through blood. So if you have cold sores, it does not mean that you're going to have genital warts. No, it's not how it works. Question number four. What will happen if I receive oral sex from somebody with a cold sore? You might get genital herpes. So again, HSV-1 is the type of herpes that infects typically the mouth and causes cold sores. HSV-2, the type that typically causes genital herpes. However, it is possible to get HSV-1 of the genitals, which can cause genital herpes, and it's possible to get genital herpes of the mouth, which can cause cold sores. So 
if you receive oral sex from somebody with a cold sore, try to use protection, uh, either a dental dam or a condom. When someone has active lesions is when it is most likely to spread. Question number five. Is it normal for my penis to hurt when my girlfriend gives me oral sex? And what could be causing it? So normal is always a tricky word. I would say it shouldn't hurt. I would first, I mean, this is kind of a complicated question. The things that I would think of most likely um, causing some of your pain with oral sex would be teeth, um, or if they have braces. Um, and if this is the only time you ever have pain is just with oral sex, that would also be my question because there are certainly conditions that cause painful erections um, and painful sex in general. Um, so if it's just oral sex, I would wonder about teeth or other stuff getting in the way. Um, if it's with other types of sex, I would ask you about appropriate lubrication um, if your penis has a bend to it, or if you are uncircumcised and you have a bit of phimosis, which makes erections painful. So a few things to consider outside of just the oral sex pain. Question number six. Do testicles have as many nerve endings as the corona of the penis? So around the head. I was wondering if they could be involved during oral sex. So testicles do not have as many nerve endings as the penis, but Sure, many people experience pleasure with testicular stimulation or um, involvement of the testicles during sex, so go for it. Question number seven. My friend had oral sex recently and has come to realize he has thrush, which is a yeast infection of the mouth. What are treatments that he can get without having to tell his parents or a doctor? He feels uncomfortable staying, stating how he got it, so is it possible to get an over-the-counter medication for it? So, one, unfortunately, no. There is no over-the-counter treatment for oral thrush or an oral yeast infection. But there are a few conditions that can lead, lead to thrush in the mouth. So, it's not like you necessarily have to assume it was from oral sex. Um, that being said, if your friend says to his parents, I have to go to the doctor for something, my mouth hurts, um, whatever happens then with treatment is confidential between the doctor and your friend. So parents still don't have to know, the doctor might, but parents don't have to know. Um, question number eight. So my boyfriend performed oral sex on me and he was kind of rough about it and sucked really hard on my labia. It felt really good. However, I am now swollen downstairs. Is that normal or should I be nervous? So, um, some people experience a varying degree of swelling. Um, uh, if it felt good, cool. He just pulled some extra blood to the private area and cause some, probably some uh, edema and blood vessels to capillaries to pop. Um, it's not a big deal and the swelling will go down. Not a big deal. Question number nine. So say the person ejaculates from oral before you have actual sexual intercourse. Does that lessen your chance of pregnancy? No. I think your question is, does ejaculating period before having sex, reduce the sperm load and um, reduce chance of pregnancy. No, no. Um, question 10. I feel really self-conscious about my penis size. Oh, I remember. So I included this one and I'll let you know in a second. I feel really self-conscious about my penis size. I'm below average and I am just always down on it. I'm worrying how it will affect my future sexual encounters, and since I have no experience, I feel I won't be able to make it up orally either. So, here's the thing. One, a lot of people are self-conscious about penis size. Really try not to be. If you're worried that it's like medically too small, you can certainly talk to your doctor, but 
I would say a couple of things. First of all, I am glad you brought up oral sex because there are, there are two reasons. Um, if your partners, if you end up having sex with females, most females don't orgasm from vaginal penetration alone. Most of them need stimulation of the clitoris. So even if you had a big penis, that's not going to do it. Most people do need stimulation other than the vagina. So that would be my first tip is talking to your partner about what feels good and don't assume it's just because of the penis, okay? The second thing is if your partner is male, similar thing is that you can always use oral sex as an additional pleasure point. Um, it's really, the whole point of sexual intimacy is so that you can share this experience with someone else and it doesn't have to be big penis in a hole. There are so many ways to share intimate moments. And so I would encourage you to, I, I understand the concern, but think, think outside the box, anybody who's worried about their penis size, because it's honestly, it's not all about size. It's really not. It really, studies show it really doesn't, it, it's not the main issue. So I think it's great that you're aware there are other ways to provide pleasure. I would focus on those, not get hung up on penis size, and you may be more well endowed than you think. So that'll do it for this round of 22 and 23.